Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you my initial impressions of the Sonia G Kayaki 2 set. So that's this set of adorable travel size brushes from one of my favorite food aid brands, Sonia G. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I have a very extensive Sonia G collection at this point. So when she released this new Kayaki brush set, I had to scoop this up right away. I'm sorry this video is coming quite late. There's been a lot of other content I've been trying to get out, so I haven't actually had a chance to play around with these brushes yet. But her original Kayaki set is one of my favorite brush sets and I use it every time I travel. So I'm really excited to try out these new brushes. So if you're interested in learning more about these brushes, seeing me demo a lot of different products on my face with them, and also do a bunch of comparisons with my very large existing makeup brush collection, then just stick around. So let's start by running through the five brushes that come in this collection. So first off, we have the Soft Face. This is a small powder brush made with white Sai Coho goat hair. So this is not something that you want to use with any cream or liquid products. Instead, it's best to use this just with powders. It does have some fluff to it, but still feels quite controlled. Next, we have the Jumbo Base Brush, and this was actually the brush that made me know immediately that I wanted to get this set because I've been eyeing the full-size Jumbo Base for a very long time and that brush is really pricey so getting this as part of a set seemed like a pretty good deal to me. The head of this brush is the same size as the original, the handle is just a little shorter. This is a combination of goat and synthetic hair so it can be used for liquids and creams. It originally came out with Sonia G's Fusion set and you can see it has a very nice interesting angle to it that I think will be really pleasant for foundation application. Next we have the Jumbo Worker. This is also goat and synthetic, so it's the same type of bristles as you see in her Fusion set. This is a very interestingly shaped brush. It kind of reminds me of the concealer brushes she came out with in the Fusion set, but it's a little bit more of a paddle shape. Then we have the Crease Brush. This is dyed Sai Coho Goat, so you only want to use this with powders. I'm interested in seeing how this compares with some of the other crease brushes I have from Sonia G, such as her Mini Booster and her Classic Crease Brush. And finally, we have the Detail Brush. This is Goat and Synthetic. So again, it's similar to the Fusion set in that you can use this for cream and liquids in addition to powders. This is like a pencil brush that comes to a sharp tip and is more stiff than the other brushes. So at the end of this video, I'll do a bunch of brush comparisons, including with her previous Kayaki set and a ton of other brushes. So feel free to skip ahead if that's what you're primarily interested in. But now let's get into demoing these brushes with a bunch of different products. So to start off today, I'm gonna to be using a matte foundation. So I'm gonna start out with a hydrating base. I have here the Na Ming Dewy Water Skin Primer. This is a product that I got in Seoul, South Korea. If you're interested in my haul, definitely check out my video. And I'm gonna go in with the Jumbo Base in order to blend this out. Usually for a primer, I would just go in with my fingers, but today I really want to see how these brushes work with as many different types of formulas as possible. So since this is a primer, I am feeling a little bit of drag and stick on my face as I glide the brush over. But this brush is very dense, and so I don't really feel like it's absorbing a lot of the product. And it's doing a really good job of just blending everything out. Next up, I'm going to use this mini of the Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation. I've never tried this before. This is a mini that I got from the cosmetic company store. So I'm excited to try this out. It's actually very cute. This mini comes in a little pump bottle, which is quite impressive for such a small sample. So I'm going to pump this out. And for today's look, I'm trying to use products that I haven't really featured on my channel before. So you'll see this is kind of a random hodgepodge of things that aren't really new releases, but that I wanted to try out with you guys. And this is in the shade Light Beige, by the way. So going back in with that Jumbo Base, I'm going to spread this across my face. 
And as a side note, if you guys would be interested in a video where I do a side-by-side -side comparison, doing half my face with the original Kayaki brush set and half with this set, let me know. I was originally actually thinking about doing that for this video, but I decided against it because I'm so familiar with the original Kayaki brush set. I've used that so many times on so many trips, whereas this is my first impression of this set, and so I didn't want to be too biased in favor of what I know best. But let me know if you guys would be interested in a more direct comparison. All right, so that blended things out very, very quickly. I think you guys can see it looks very seamless. I don't see any streak marks really. This brush is also just really soft. It kind of feels like a cat's paw. It's very nice. So, all right, so far I'm really enjoying this brush. And I feel like this slant makes it really comfortable to use as well, because you're not having to do this at kind of like a right angle with your face. Instead, you can just keep your arm down and sort of pat it in at a very comfortable angle. And of course, whenever you use a brush, it will tend to absorb more product than using a sponge or your fingers. But I do feel like because this is just such a dense brush, I mean, you guys can probably see that density. I feel like overall, it doesn't actually absorb a ton of product. So my skin has been breaking out quite a bit and has been quite unhappy. So now let's go and try to conceal some of these spots. So I have my Clay de Peau concealer in the shade 2 Ochre. This is in their newer formulation. And let me actually go in first with this detail brush. This seems like a really good brush to use for pinpoint concealing, so let's try that out. I have this one very angry looking zit over here. So I'm also just doing that over here. Pinpoint concealing is something I normally don't really have the patience for, but from watching videos done by professional makeup artists, this does seem to be a really important technique because this way you don't have to rely on putting super heavy coverage on. Instead, you can put a more sheer layer and then just really rely on putting the coverage just on the places where you really need it. Alrighty, so pinpoint concealing done, and I think this brush did a really good job. It's firm enough that you can get that sort of precision. It's not like the hairs are going to splay all over the place. And I think you can see that it does come to a pretty sharp tip, and so that also really helps with the precision. For under eye concealer, I'm going in with my Pat McGrath concealer. This is my tried and true concealer. I have this in the shade LM10. I'm gonna put this just around the center of my face where I could use a little bit more help. And now I'm gonna go in with that Jumbo Worker and see how this works for concealer. This is definitely way fluffier than either of the previous two brushes. Those feel really dense and really just primarily for liquids and creams. I feel like this fluffiness means that this could also be used for something like highlighter where you don't want so much of a concentrated application but you want something a little bit more diffuse but this is doing a really good job still i think the softness both means that it's not going to drag on your skin and also means that it can provide a little bit more of a diffused finish Personally, I don't really use cream or liquid eyeshadows very often, but I think this would be really good if you wanted to put kind of a one and done cream eyeshadow all over your lids. Of all the brushes in, the, in this collection, this one definitely seemed the most dissimilar from Sonia G's current collection. I haven't really seen her come out with a brush quite this shape before. But she said this one really sparks joy for her and she uses this for all sorts of things including cream blush and highlight so we're gonna have to try that out today as well all right so here we have the base down and i will say as a side note that i'm really glad i put on this hydrating primer underneath because my face is looking pretty set and pretty matte even without any powder so i would say that this born this way foundation is pretty matte as the name implies so now let's go into some contouring. So ever since I got the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer, that has been my go-to pretty much every time I use cream bronzer. But today I wanted to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going in with this cream bronzer from Tristique. 
I don't actually know if I've showed you guys this bronzer very much on my channel. I've definitely done it in comparisons, but I'm not sure if I've actually put it on for you guys. So I'm going to go in with that jumbo base to start and use this just to provide a little bit more contour and dimension to my face. Ooh, that blended in very nicely. I do think the shape of this jumbo base is really good for cream bronzer. It's thick enough to provide that diffuse application without having to do much blending. As you can see, I'm basically just stamping the product on my face, but it's also not so big that you lose that definition. I feel like no one actually talks about this Tracetic bronzer or really about Tracetic in general that I've seen on YouTube, but I actually really like this product. Before I got the Charlotte Tilbury, this was kind of my go-to cream bronzer. So normally I might build this up a little bit more, but I am gonna use some powder bronzer later. So let's just leave it at this. I think that's a really nice sort of natural bronzy contour to the face. For cream blush, I'm gonna go in with this Nude Sticks Cream Blush in the shade Sweet Cheeks. Both this and the Trace Steak Bronzer were from Ipsy Glam Bags that I got, and I've really enjoyed both of them. Personally, I'm a big fan of Ipsy. I think it's a really fun way to get new products in the mail and kind of surprise yourself because a lot of the favorites I've gotten from Ipsy are brands I never really heard about or just was not particularly interested in. And this way I could get their products for a much lower price. So here we have the Nude Sticks blush on this side. Overall, I really like how this jumbo base is very versatile. I think you could basically do most of your face with this brush, anything that you don't need a lot of precision with. I really love how with this brush, you can just do that sort of padding motion and that way you don't really have to actively blend anything out. It leaves a really nice diffused effect on the skin. For the sake of trying out some more formulas though, I have here my Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand. This is in the shade Pink Gasm. I wanted to also see how these brushes would work with a liquid blush. So I'm gonna just squeeze out a little bit of that product. And for this one, I'm gonna go in with that Jumbo Worker, tap directly from the brush. And then, ooh, wow, this product is so pretty sort of forgot how it can pack quite a punch. But let's see how this brush performs in terms of blending out the blush. It certainly takes a little bit more time than the Jumbo base, because of course it's a lot smaller, but I think this also works quite well if you want to be a little bit more precise in your blush placement. And that blush is so pretty, wow. Actually, I'm gonna put some of that on this side as well just to even things out because I feel like this is a lot more glowy than the nude sticks. And today's video is not really about the look, it's about these brushes. So I'm just gonna have some fun and put a lot of makeup on my face. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So highly, highly blushed cheeks. And certainly at this point, we don't really need any more highlight between the dewiness and the shine on the cheeks. But I do have this LYS Aim High Highlighter, again, from a recent Ipsy bag. This is in the shade Brave, which is their champagne shade. Ooh, this is a very cool bottle. I love the triangular motifs in LYS's packaging. Very, very nice. So let's open this up. This is my first time trying this, so let me just squeeze some of it out first. Give you guys a swatch. Ooh, wow, that's really pretty. Look at that shine. So sticking with the Jumbo Worker, I'm just gonna take a little bit of what I squeezed out on my hand and just put this on the high points of my face. Let me put a little bit here. Okay, it's actually not really showing up on top of this already very glittery cheek. So actually, let me try to put this on my nose. And that reminds me actually, I should do some nose contour while, while we're at it. So let me go back in with Tracetique. With that Jumbo Worker again, I'm going to take some of that and first contour my nose. This is actually, I think, the perfect brush for nose contour, interesting. Nose contour is one of those steps that I typically forget to do, and later on when I'm taking pictures, I feel like my nose just looks totally white. <laughs> this brush, though, is really, really nice. I mean, this is the perfect shape for this. All right, I'm glad I remembered this, because 
Look at that, that was so easy. All right, so now let's squeeze out a little bit more of this highlighter. And this highlighter does dry pretty quickly, so that's good if you want to have something that's not going to be too wet on the skin, but just something to note in terms of application that you do have to work a little bit fast. Ooh, look at that. That definitely brought a little bit of shine. Put some on the Cupid's bow as well. Alrighty, so I think you can see that's actually a really pretty highlight. It is on the more subtle side, and so, so if you have a really high shine blush like I have on today, it's not going to add much shine on top of that, but I think it adds a very beautiful subtle sheen to the skin. Alrighty, good job LIS. As a side note, I have a full face of LIS Beauty in case you guys are interested in their products. So I went off camera to do my brows, so now let's get into powder products. So first off, again from my latest Ipsy bag, I have this one size pressed powder. This is their Turn Up The Base Versatile Powder Foundation in the shade Light 2N. This is my first time trying out this product and I'm quite excited because I've heard rave reviews about the loose powder from one size, so let's see how this pressed powder works. Personally, I am more of a fan of pressed powder. So let's go in with this soft face brush. And I'm gonna start at the center of my face since that's where things are getting a little bit greasy. It's very hot where I am today, so I'm sweating quite a bit under all these lights. But let's first just put this on half of my face just so we can see how well it sets my makeup. And I'll be interested in seeing how well this works in putting powder products all over the face because that was the one thing I was a little bit concerned about with this collection. You have this one fairly small powder brush to do all of your powder face products. That was actually not too bad. That did not take that much time to do. And I do like how because this is quite small, you can really get into all the places around your face. It's quite good for getting into all the contours. Alrighty. Hmm. What do you guys think? This side is set. This side is not set. I do think this side looks a little bit more mattified, a little bit more blurred. And at least upon initial application, it doesn't look that dry either, which is great because I have fairly dry skin. So that's always my concern with setting powders. So let's go ahead and also set this side. And this brush is very, very soft. I do think one advantage of this being so small is it's probably less likely to disturb the product as you're setting it because you can sort of just very lightly pat it in. And actually, as I'm doing this, I'm remembering that Soniji did say she really likes the jumbo worker for setting under the eyes. So let's actually try that. So I'm going to take some of that on this brush instead and push this just into that under eye area. Yeah, okay. I think this is a pretty good size for that. I think you can also use this to set other small areas of the face. Okay, so far so good. So now let's go into some powder bronzer. This one is from Kimchi Chic. This is in I Went to Venice. We go in again with that soft cheek and I've been really liking this bronzer. This is one I've been using quite a lot on days when I'm not filming. I swear this video is not sponsored by Ipsy, but this is also an Ipsy product. My channel is definitely too small to get sponsorships or even really PR. But recently I have found a lot of products I've been really enjoying from Ipsy and I just haven't had a chance to show you guys because usually for my channel I focus more on new releases, things that you guys are really excited to see. But this bronzer blends out really easily and I think this brush is also a pretty good size for any sort of cheek products that you have. Alrighty, so I think this little brush did a really good job. It looks very small, but it has enough fluffiness to still cover a decent amount of area. And the precision is actually quite useful for navigating the center of your face. For eyeshadow today, I'm gonna go in with the Tom Ford Pretty Baby. And I actually got this quad for $19 from the cosmetic company store. So if you guys haven't watched my try on haul, you should definitely check that out. But I actually haven't done a full eyeshadow look using this palette yet. So let's do that today. I'm gonna first start with the Jumbo Worker and go into this satin purple lilac lavender shade and see how this works for putting sort of some shadow all over the lid in the transition area. I don't know if that's the main purpose for this, but just want to try it out. Ooh, okay. It's 
not doing a terrible job at this. Definitely it's not very precise because it's quite big, but I feel like it blends things out quite nicely. So yeah, I think if you were just doing a one and done shadow look, this would be a pretty good brush. I do want a bit more precision though, so I'm gonna go in with that crease brush and use this just to build that up more in the crease area. This crease brush is a bit more precise than some of her other ones. It seems bigger than the mini booster, but smaller than a lot of her other crease brushes. But this shadow is going on very nicely, which is to be expected. This is a satin shade. Now let's go in with that deeper shade to add some more depth to this look. So I'm gonna start on the outer portion of the eyes. So far so good. This is very easy to blend with this brush. Alrighty, so there isn't really a brush to put all over shimmer on with. So I'm gonna just go in with a finger into this shade and put this all over the lid. This was the shade that really attracted me to this quad. As you can see, it has a really beautiful dual chromatic iridescence to it. It flips between pink and blue. It's just so pretty. Look at that. And Tom Ford's not a brand I usually think of for like shifty dual chromatic shades, but he really hit it out of the park with this one. So I'm just going in with a little bit more of that deepening shade just to smooth out any edges. Cleaning off that brush, I'm gonna go into this lightest shade just for some brow bone highlight. And this shade actually has a little bit of a lilac tinge to it as well. I'll put some of that in the inner corners. And now for the lower lash line, I think this crease brush is a little bit big, so I'm gonna go in with the detail brush. And first I'll go into that lavender shade and just sweep this all along the lower lash line. For this, I think it's good to focus the shadow on the tip of the brush, just so you have a little bit more precision. And then I'm also gonna take some of the deeper shade in the outer corner. Then cleaning off the brush, I'm gonna take some of that lightest shade and put this on the inner portion. Actually, it doesn't have that much shine, so I'm gonna take some of that dual chromatic shade as well and try to focus that on the inner two thirds. Alrighty, I think this brush did a pretty good job. I wouldn't say it's my absolute favorite brush for the lower lash line because the tip can be a little bit pokey as you're gliding it under the lash line but it does provide you with that precision, which is quite nice. So you can basically do your entire lower lash line with this one brush. So I'm gonna go off camera now, finish off this look, and be back with brush comparisons and my overall initial review of this brush set. So I went off camera to do my eyeliner, but then I decided I did wanna do lips with you guys, cause this is a brand new Pat McGrath lipstick. This is her Matte Trance in the shade Divine Rose. So this is brand new, untouched. So I just wanted to show you guys that beautiful new lipstick bullet. So here we have Divine Rose on the lips. This is one of my favorite matte lipstick formulas. Usually I can't really wear matte lipsticks, but this is one that is very comfortable on the lips. I don't find it to really dry out my lips over the course of the day. It has more of that velvet moussey texture to it. So it's not gonna be transfer proof, but for me, it's worth it given the comfort. So here we have the final look. What do you guys think? I am really digging this eye look. I have to say, I am very impressed. I was not expecting this to turn out so well. So overall, I really like how everything is looking on my face and I'm very impressed that I was able to achieve this look with just these five brushes. At no point did I feel like I needed any more brushes to do any sort of task. So very, very positive initial impression. So now let's get into brush comparisons. So here we have the Jumbo Base from Kayaki 2 and the Mini Base from Kayaki 1. So you can see that if you're someone who really likes to go in with cream and liquid products and you want a brush that can really quickly apply a lot of it to your face, then the Jumbo Base would probably be better than the Mini Base for that. In the original Kayaki set, this is the only brush that is specifically for liquids and creams. And here we have the mini base next to the Jumbo Worker. You can see the Jumbo Worker is much smaller, especially in intersection. The mini base has a round ferrule, whereas the Jumbo Worker has a pinched ferrule. And here we have the Jumbo Blender next to the Jumbo Worker. So the Jumbo Worker is definitely quite a bit larger, also fluffs out much more. And here we have the Classic Face from Kayaki 1 next to Soft Face Kayaki 2. 
The Kayaki One brush is a bit larger and has a pinched ferrule instead of a round ferrule. Here is the crease brush next to the mini booster from Kayaki One. The crease brush is definitely quite a bit larger and has more of a point at the top. Both have a round ferrule. Finally, we have the flat definer next to the detail brush. The flat definer, as its name implies, is flat on one side. This is more so for packing on pigment or drawing more precise lines, whereas the detail brush is more of a pencil brush shape. So now let's compare this new Kayaki set with some of my non-travel size brushes. So here is the Jumbo base next to the BK Beauty 101 brush. The BK Beauty has a more pronounced slant to it and is also just a larger brush in general. I would say the Jumbo base has more of a soft padding motion, whereas the BK Beauty brush is better if you want to use downward strokes. And the handle lengths are quite different. Here's Jumbo Base next to the base brush from the Lotus set from Sonia G. That brush is much thinner and has a fan shape, but both of these are great for foundation application. For the soft face brush, here it is next to the Designer Pro, which has a pinched ferrule and is a bit longer and tapered in comparison to the soft face. Here it is next to the Cheek Pro, which is also slightly pinched and fans out a bit more. Here it is next to brush 5 from the Yano series, so somewhat similar size but quite different shape. There's no taper with the soft cheek. Here it is next to the rougher number 18, again similar size but the rougher has more of a round shape. This is the Hinoki series from Sonia G, very different shape but similar size. Here we have the Jumbo Worker next to the soft concealer brush from Sonia G. Both of these have the same kinds of bristles. The soft concealer is a bit smaller and it's round, but they have a very similar texture to them. Here is the Detail Pro from Sonia G next to the Jumbo Worker. Somewhat similar size, but different shape and bristles. Here we have the Kayaki 2 Crease Brush next to the Classic Crease, which is a bit fluffier, has more bristles, whereas the Crease Brush tapers much more but they have a very similar length. Here it is next to my all-time favorite Wayne Goss number no. 16 brush. The Wayne Goss number no. 16 is a bit more rounded at the top and is also a larger brush. The Kayaki 2 crease is larger than the Wayne Goss number no. 19 brush though and has a bit more of a taper. The Wayne Goss number no. 19 is one of my favorite outer corner brushes. Here it is next to the Refer number no. 15. Similar length, but the Refer number no. 15 is wider and fluffier. This is the Chikahoto Blend Brush, which is a little bit longer and flatter at the top. These do have the same length handles though, so that is something to note, even though some people are worried about these handles being too short in the Kayaki Brush Series. If you have tried Japanese Fude brushes before, they are the same length as a lot of those standard size brushes. Finally, we have the Detail Brush. I have this next to the Refer number no. 26 brush. The shape is basically identical, but I would say the Refer number no. 26 brush is a little bit less firmly packed, so it's a bit softer, whereas the Detail Brush from Sonia G has a much stiffer point. Here it is next to the Soft Definer from Sonia G's Lotus set. The Soft Definer is much smaller, but they do have a similar point to them. Here we have it next to the Refer number no. 3 brush, which is much smaller. This is the Esim S31, also much smaller, though a way, way longer brush. Here is the Pencil Pro from Sonia G, much smaller and flatter, more of a domed top. And finally, here's the Wayne Goss number no. 7 from his Edit series. Somewhat similar size and shape, the Wayne Goss also has a bit of a point to it. So there we have the main brush comparisons I was able to think of. I do have a lot of Fude brushes though, so if you guys have ones that you are particularly curious about, definitely let me know and I'm happy to post pictures of comparisons or show them in my monthly updates. So with those comparisons out of the way, let's get into my initial impressions of this Kayaki brush set. 
So I would say that overall I was very impressed with this. So I absolutely love the Keaki One brush set. Like I said, I bring that every time I go traveling. So I had very high expectations for this Keaki Two. I think Sonia G did a great job of curating a set that you can use to get a full face of makeup, but that isn't redundant to her previous set. All of these brushes are quite different, but they still manage to put together a really nice full face. On the whole, I would say the second set is much better for someone who is really into creams and liquids, whereas the first set is a little bit more geared towards folks who are oriented around powders. Again, if you're interested in a side-by-side -side comparison, let me know and I'm happy to film that video as well. Going brush by brush, I really love this jumbo base. If you are someone who loves cream or liquid foundation, bronzer, blush, then this is an excellent brush that will make really short work of doing your full face of makeup. This jumbo worker really surprised me in terms of how versatile it is. I don't really have a brush quite like this in my collection currently, but I feel like this was able to do a lot of more detailed work, both for creams and liquids and also for powders. So that was quite impressive. This soft face brush was the one I was most worried about because I thought it's a lot of tasks to give to just one small powder brush, but this one actually managed to do a really excellent job. I didn't feel like it was too small. I didn't feel like it was taking forever to get my face set. So I'm quite pleased with this brush and just how soft it feels on the face. This crease brush was also quite impressive. I wasn't quite sure how I would like it given that it's sort of in an in-between size. Usually I like larger brushes for my crease area and smaller brushes for my outer corner and lower lash line. I will have to continue playing around with this with other eyeshadow palettes because I do think the Tom Ford shadows were just quite easy to blend out in general. But at least upon initial impressions, this did an excellent job for today's look. Finally, we have the detail brush, and I feel like this one I'm a little bit on the fence about. I think it is good for a wide variety of tasks. I liked it for pinpoint concealing, and I think it did offer a lot of precision in the lower lash line. It is just a little bit pokey, and I think if I'm traveling with this set, this is the main brush that I'm gonna rely on for my lower lash line. So at least upon my initial impression, I do think the flat definer from the original Keaki set is a little bit more pleasant on the lower lash line. That said, this brush is more versatile. Sonia G also said she likes to use this as a lip brush. So the fact that this is in a mix of natural and synthetic hair does mean that you can do a lot with this brush. On the whole though, I really enjoyed today's makeup experience. I really liked how these brushes performed on my skin and I loved the look that they gave me. So if you're on the market for a luxury travel brush set and if you like really soft, beautifully handcrafted brushes, I would highly recommend checking out this Keaki 2 set. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to hear in the comments down below what you guys think about this set. Are you interested in picking it up? Do you have the original Keaki brush set? Would you be interested in a comparison between the two? Definitely let me know down below. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.